G'day guys, Matthew with the Outer Circle, and today we're going to go over a contentious issue, and that is uh, what constitutes a 30k army. So in order to do this, what I've done is I've just downloaded a bunch of random pictures of pre-heresy stuff from the internet, or heresy era miniatures. Now that's stuff that's painted, pretty much always um, painted in a pre-heresy pattern, uh, often utilising parts from 40k. And in my own subjective slash 30k elitist way, we're just going to go through one by one. We're not going to critique the painting or pick on people or anything like that. But we're going to look. I'm going to explain what I feel constitutes um, something that's appropriate for 30k. Why is this the question? Well, often we get messaged by people and they say, Oh, you know, if I use this or do this, do you think people will have a problem playing against me? And I think the answer is mostly going to be no. And people won't have a problem. As long as you put effort in, um, try to use different parts, that kind of thing, people will be fine with what you do. It's if you are lazy and you put no effort into it and you literally just... Like, I see a lot of people with uh, specifically uh, Imperial Fists and Blood Angels players. No offense to them. Who, they decide they want to play 30k... Like they, and they, I mean, go at it, go at it hard, and not just as a stopgap measure, but as a permanent thing. They just port their whole forty k army over, and they say, "Oh, it's okay because they're allowed to wear Mark Seven power armor because they had it at the Siege of Terror." Um, well, aside from picking holes in that, most of the games, especially since the books are nowhere near that point, gameplay wise, they're not set on Terror. So if you're going to be fighting, like you know. The Battle of Fell or the Drop Site Massacre or something like that. Perhaps it's best you aren't using um, whole armies of armor that was produced after the Horus Heresy. Now there are of course exceptions to this rule, um, but you know we'll get into that as we go. So first off here we have Marines that are obviously, um, despite having helmets that are from forty uh, from thirty k the Mark IV helmet. These are clearly all made with uh, Mark Seven power armor. Is this a problem? No. They've shoulder-mounted auto cannons for the squad, using ones from Cadian kit. They have swapped the helmets, and they've made an effort to file down the top of the kneecaps to square them off a little bit. This has uh, made them look a little bit like uh, Mark IV knee pads that way. That is perfectly acceptable level of effort for a 30k army. What about these guys here? Well, they are mostly Chaos Space Marine parts from 40k. But, again, that's fine because the chests, that kind of thing, a heresy error. Uh, Mark V chests. That's a Mark V helmet. That's a World Eater's helmet. This guy here has beaky. He has beaky. He has beaky legs. That's the appropriate amount of effort. So, again pretty passable. Even the bolt guns have had their magazines moved forward to make them look like a heresy era bolt gun. This does not pass. It is a 40k land raider. It has 40k, well, okay, the Iron Warriors emblem with the Chaos Star, I'm fine with that in 30k. You can have that on your rhinos, that kind of thing, that's fine. But the Sponsons are straight out of 40k. No effort is in this. I'm not saying that this person has painted this for 30k, but the image is used for demonstration purposes as not being 30k. This stuff here. Okay, 40k bolt guns, not great. But, 30k helmets, an effort to change them up using Chaos Warrior legs, that kind of thing. Fantastic. Apologies, by the way, for the Facebook notification in the background. That should be muted now, so that won't happen again. Um, yeah, so the effort, in my opinion, is there for 30k. What about this guy here? This is right on the borderline. I'm not talking about paint or anything like that, but 40k bolt gun. The shoulder pads don't look like any real efforts being put into changing them to 30k. And the helmet looks like a beaky cut down, maybe. Or a little bit of green stuff put on the front of a um, standard Space Marine Mark Seven helmet. This is like the most minimum level of effort possible. This is like 
maybe a pass. A few of these scattered throughout an army, probably get away with them. This is 40k, through and through. Doesn't matter um, that he's got a heresy error, studded shoulder pad, no. Mark 7 armor, clear as day, Mark 7 helmet, modern bolt gun, no go. This command squad. Alright, a few of these guys have got 40k legs. Look like they have a mixture of 40k weapons, but it looks right. They're in 30k paint jobs, they've all been cloaked up, they're clearly a command squad wearing some sort of artificer armor, right? They've got um, sort of fancy laurels and wreaths and things like that added to their armor to help break them up. This is perfectly acceptable for 30k. So you can see we're pretty, pretty loose with what, I me mean, personally, I'd allow. This... Clearly a heresy era land raider. This one, yeah, I'd give this a pass for sure. Because a little bit of effort was made here, not just with the blood and skull industries um, treads and the fuel tanks on the back, that kind of thing, but because they've changed the hatches on the side of the vehicle. Now, I don't know how much work was involved in this. I suppose probably a, a bit of work um, doing it, but it looks more heresy, you know, in design. So great. This here is the perfect example of a 40k army, okay, uh, not a 30k army. Some models, like this squad sergeant here, would be fine. That's about it. You maybe could use the scouts in 30k because you can get power armoured, uh, sorry, scout armoured marines with sniper rifles in your recon squads. But apart from that, everything else is, it's totally 40k. Now, this army doesn't matter when it was made. It could have been made, like, in the 1990s. It could have been made in the early 2000s before Horus Heresy parts were really widely available. I'm not criticising them for what they've done. I'm, I'm just saying that these days, you know, we can move on, we can do better. These here, 40k. There is nothing 30k about them. Alright, these Blood Angels. Yes, he has iron pattern helmet, iron pattern shoulder pads, and is in fact totally in iron armor now that I look at it. Has a Maximus bolt gun. Okay, he's 30k. What about this guy? No. This guy? Yeah, you could get away with that. That's a full beaky ensemble. It's minus the beak. That's about it. So you've really got two guys in this whole squad that are heresy. No one else is. So this would be a fail, not a pass. This one here is from a blog post about a heresy era death guard army i would be inclined to say no um not just because the fact he's wearing mark 8 errant armor has mark 7 legs or possibly even errant legs actually now that i look at it with the little uh, tacits has a modern bolt gun modern backpack nothing 30k about it right these guys well, okay, they've got heresy era legs, kind of got heresy era shoulder pads. They've got Mark 8 errant armor for their chests, right down the borderline again for me. I think torsos are a big one in uh, 30k. I, I think I would give this a pass. Alright, this Land Raider, it's big. Uh, I believe this again is Blood and Skulls Industries, make these side sponsor conversions. I would give this a pass, for sure. Effort has definitely been made here to make it Heresy Era. What about these guys? Okay, 40k Grey Knight legs, 40k Blood Angels Sanguinary Guard chests, 40k Terminator uh, torso slash back, which the chests are attached to with Grey Knight helmets. But, it's stylistic, because the Blood Angels can get away with the six pack chests. They have used different shoulder pads to help them look a bit more like Cataphracty. The weapon loadout is definitely not 40k loadout. He hasn't just used Thunder Hammers and Storm Shields, he's made up maces for them. Uh, he's also added plumes to their backs and different reliquy symbols. Reliquy. There we go. <laughs> I just had to try and say that again. So, I think that's perfectly acceptable for 30k. What about these guys? 
Well, of course, these are 30k. These are Saturnine pattern terminators. These are kits from right back in the early days of 40k. And hopefully we see them make a comeback in 30k. I think that would be great. There is pictures of them in the Horus Heresy artwork. So, this Land Raider. Had a little bit of work done to it around the top here. Uh, looks like part of a Lehman Russ side sponson, maybe, on top of it. Has some Iron Hands doors. That's fine. This is 40k, though. It's 40k through and through. The, the main giveaway is the sponsons. If you can't be bothered to change the sponsors on your Land Raider, it is a bit lazy, in my opinion. This one here is not 30k, but the helmet kind of looks like a Mark V, and let's not forget, this is a one-piece monopose uh, metal librarian from the 90s. It's actually a really early 90s one, I think. In this case, however, the left arm has been replaced at some point with a missile launcher arm. I think if you replace that with maybe a Mark III or a Mark IV arm um, and a Mark IV backpack, you would get away with this just fine. Again, people are pretty accepting of like metal models, uh, to some extent one piece fine cast models, but generally fine cast is a pretty quick material to cut through. So, but yeah, I mean, a reasonable amount of effort, right? If it was fully plastic, people would expect a lot more work put into it than if something is solid metal, for obvious reasons. What about this guy here? Yeah, no. That's all 40k parts. So that's simply a no-go in my book. Alright, these guys here. Now, this is an interesting one. These are all pre-heresy Dark Angels. Those are old school markings out of like Rogue Trader, that kind of thing. Hell, this guy's even rocking like a Rogue Trader era punk fucking mohawk. <laughs> now, where do I rate these? Well, where possible, he's used beaky legs and he has used beaky helmets. But that's about it. This is one of those borderline things where it's like... Uh, yeah, I'd probably, I'd probably let it go. He's put the effort into painting them up, you know. Don't think the Gene Stiller head is appropriate for 30k, but, you know, let's just pretend it's a Xenos. Um, if I did see this army, or if I was building it myself using these parts, I would try and at least swap out the bolt guns, but that's neither here nor there. I think I'd give this a pass. This one here, the only thing that screams 30k is the studded shoulder pad. That's it. So I would... I would probably say no. If this was a one-off in the army, a single character, then sure. But, I mean, as it stands, no. And what about these guys? No, well, this guy's got beaky legs. He's got Mark Six legs. This guy's got a variant of the Iron Pattern helmet. The bear heads are perfectly fine. Bear heads are always serviceable. This guy's got another variant of the Mark Three helmet. But no. Nothing about these screams heresy. These are 40k. What about these guys here? More Heresy Era Dark Angels. Well, Mark IV helmets, a Mark IV chest plate, another Mark IV chest plate, some beaky legs. Yeah, I'd be totally cool with that for 30k. What about these guys? I do apologise that part of them is cropped out of the image, by the way. I, I do notice. <laughs> All right. 40k sorcerer's helmet with the horns cut off. Fine. Looks like it could be some sort of iron helmet or sarum helmet. These look like sarum pattern helmets because they're cut down berserker helmets. Yep, he's used chaos shoulder pads to try and give that Mark II, Mark III flair to them. That's fine. He's used chaos backpack with the sort of arms cut off and shorten the nacelles right in so it looks different. Okay, again, cool, fine, totally fine. A mixture of chaos legs and different legs to try and uh, give that heresy vibe again. So, yeah, I'd be totally fine with this. This will be this force. And that brings us to the end. Uh, there were more pictures, but not all the files will actually show up because of how people save them on the internet or format them on the internet. I would get around and source all these things, but hey, I'm not a journalist. I'm just Joe Blow who does these things after work. Um... So there, there you go. 
if you do want to get into the Horus Heresy and you're afraid that you know, like people are going to really come down on you if you don't have a 100% resin army, you know, or you don't have tons of uh, fully Horus Heresy allowed power armor, chill out. As long as you put the effort in, you've tried to convert it, you know, and you haven't just slapped a 30k paint job on an entirely 40k miniature, people will be fine with it. Um, quick point on vehicles, the 40k Rhino kit, totally cool to use in 30k. Totally fine. That's a legit 30, 30k variant vehicle. But, you should probably change the Storm Bolter on top of it. Um, maybe get rid of the Aquilas off the vehicle as well. <laughs> But, you know, apart from that, perfectly fine in my opinion. Because the Mark II Rhino was in production in the Horus Heresy. Um, that's about it. So, thank you all for watching the episode. I hope some people have got a little bit more confidence about them now. About what is and isn't acceptable. I think it's... I hope might personally show that I'm pretty open-minded when it comes to what I'll allow. And, uh, frankly, after having discussions with friends, they all feel pretty much the same as I do. One last thing, don't use your 40k Primarchs in 30k, um, don't use your 40k bikes in 30k, unless you're going to go to the effort of at least changing the helmet and torso on the bike riders. Um, or, you know, maybe you're converting something up special with your 40k Primarch, your Gilliman or your Magnus. I mean, the Magnus is really stretching it, I think. So, yeah. Thanks all for watching the episode. Leave your thoughts and comments below, and I'll see you all next time.